Well, welcome to another episode, episode 27 of uh, Retro Power Uncut. Um, it feels like it's been quite a long week. Um, we've, there's been a, a lot of very small sort of finicky jobs going on, a lot of things running in parallel. So it's been quite hard to uh, keep on top of and keep our heads going around. Um, but uh, I shall start with Gordon's car that I'm uh, stood underneath. I imagine there'll be a few people wondering sort of why it's lurking in the background for, for quite a while. Um, it's, as has been explained before, there are quite a few jobs that we've been tackling on it that were little, little things that needed uh, modifications. There was various winter, various winter changes to be made, various little um, upgrades to be done. And, and one of the areas was driveline vibration. Um, well, not really driveline vibration, driveline refinement would be a better word. Um, and the area we, we have issues with was the engine mount bushes. They're a World Cup crossmember type bush, as it would be referred to in, in escort circles. And they transmit too much vibration into the shell. And having gone round and round in circles, we, we made our own, we actually moulded our own polyurethane bushes, uh, which are approximately 50 sure, sure hardness. Um, and they were pretty good, but we had a concern that because they're not a bonded bush and the centre tube isn't actually bonded into the, um, the uh, polymer, that with the engine movement, eventually it could actually fret and break down the polymer. Um, so, so that was a bit of a concern at the back of our mind. And we also wondered whether we couldn't actually go a little bit softer still. All of that led us to think, well, really, we need to make a bonded rubber bush uh, for this application. And there isn't one available in the correct compound or even of a particularly known compound because they're all made uh, considerably away from this country, um, generally in the Far East and India, I believe. Uh, and the control on the quality of the compound is a little bit lax, uh, I would say. So um, we actually approached a UK manufacturer, um, Bonded Motor Spares, about making uh, some new uh, bushes in a much softer compound, uh, 45 sure hardness, uh, which we've now done a Cal touch on last week. There was a bit of a, a bit of toing and froing on that in that um, there was a bit of a delay in them being able to get the tooling made and there was a delay in them being able to get the tubes made. So we've done that. We've actually had the tooling, we've machined the tooling, well, Dynamic Precision who do work for us have machined the tooling. Uh, and we've um, ourselves machined the centre tubes for those bushes and with very, very rapid work by, bonded motor by Neil at Bonded Motor Spares, he's actually bonded, uh, moulded us um, a set of, well, several sets now of these uh, World Cup crossmember type bushes in a 45 shore compound uh, to our own drawing in our own tooling. Um, we're, so far, all, all seems good. We've run the car for the first time with these in today and the refinement's much improved. We've now got rid of a lot of the vibration. Well, again, buzziness rather than vibration. It wasn't a particularly notable vibration, but there was a buzziness um, to, the, to, the, to the feel from the engine, which has now gone now we're running these. So uh, the initial, the, the initial uh, feedback is very good. It's got to go out on test drive. Uh, and before it does that, we've done the electric power steering um, conversion, which again, we've talked about before. We've just got to finalize the wiring on that. And then the car can go out for test, make sure that these have done what we uh, suspect they will have done and certainly what the first indications on running the engine today have indicated that the, 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 the vibration, the, the buzziness is much reduced. So if anybody is interested, we are actually making a number of these. They're 45 sure British made bushes to fit the World Cup cross member application on, uh, on a typical escort. So if anybody wants any, just drop us an email, inquiries at retropower.co.uk. Um, because we will have quite a number of them because we're going we're gonna to make a production run of them to try and to offset the cost of doing the tool for this because we've just done this off our own back so it will offset the, the cost of the tooling and, and the cost of making them. So that's, that's, that's covered why, <laughs> why that's here and, but it is all now back together and I say test, test driving really is the, the next step on that to just verify that the steering's all good and that the, the bushes have done what they're supposed to do. So yeah, that's, that's where that's at, very, uh, very pleased with that. Lurking in the background uh, out of shot is the Stratos. Uh, we've done a little bit more work on that. There's been some work around the, the steering column shroud. We talked about this before and it's a small detail but it is quite quite difficult to actually to sort. The, the original steering column shroud, the, the Fiat type column shroud that um, goes with the steering column that's in that car, 
uh, doesn't doesn't mate with the dashboard correctly. So we have had a we've had that scanned and a, an extension piece made uh, and three D printed, which again we've talked about before. But what we hadn't done is then the work to then mesh the um, the dash screen that's going in that car. The dash display screen is on is going to be mounted to a pit, an aluminium billet piece, which is then mounted onto an aluminium billet stanchion, which then bolts to the steering column and it goes through an aperture in the column shroud. Um, and because we haven't got those parts, <laughs> we, we, we couldn't then do the aperture in the column shroud. So the CAD has been modified to make that cut out. And then we've been fine tuning that in the car, checking the alignment. And then the, um, the screen part, the screen support uh, has been 3D printed and the screen and holder has been 3D printed. And all of that's been assembled into the car to actually check that the, the, the aperture size is all correct in the column shroud and that everything's going to fit. And I believe that we're now at the position where all of that is is functional and is all is all working. So that's another little uh, another small step forward on that. Utah on my right hand side, um, work is progressing on that, particularly on the trim side, but a number of other jobs as well. However, I'm going to leave that to Cal next week because there'll be there are a number of items that are away at subcontractors, but mainly plating, basically plating and anodizing. There are various parts that have come to us um, from Alitech uh, from being machined, which have now gone off for post machining treatments that are we, are we waiting to come back. So we'll, I'm going to leave that one to Cal next week to go through the, the Utah progress because we'll have a, a, a pile of shiny bits by next week which we haven't got at the moment so uh, so I think at this point we'll have a wander on next door and we'll have a look at some bits of metal so uh, wander this way <clears throat> Just on my end of day coffee because uh, I was flagging. It's been it's been a long day. And, uh, <laughs> there's been a lot going on, and uh, I'm, uh, my, my energy levels were dropping a bit. So uh, I was on a on an end of day coffee to keep me going. Right, Morris. Stu's been uh, working away on this. I think we had just start, he just started work on the final wing, the the near side rear wing, last week. He has carried on with that. He's got 80% of the shape there. We weren't happy with the arch lip. It just wasn't quite right. And we got to the point, uh, and anybody that does metal shaping as will have been in this situation, where you can chase your tail, go round and round in circles, trying to fine tune part of a panel that you've made after welding it all together. And actually what happens is you ruin the entire panel. So we've elected to not do that. Stu's, we had a chat with Stu and we had a bit of a think about it and decided to remake the lip as a separate section, which he's done. Happy with the fit of that now. It's all sat on there with no real tension on it. He's uh, tacked that all on now just to, just to verify that it's exactly right and all flush. He's going to scribe and cut that in next, get that cut in. Um, and then that should then finalise this wing. We were really happy with the rest of it, so we didn't want to fiddle too much with the rest of it. And trying to manipulate the, the, the lip to, to get the shape correct there was starting to pull the rest of the shape around. I mean, it's not a thing you want to do. It's, it's best to cut your losses, cut out the section that you're not happy with and make a new section. And don't be afraid to put another weld into the panel. The, the, it's, nice, it's always nice to make a panel with as few welds as possible, but not at the expense of, of misshaping the rest of the panel because of that. Um, so he'll, he'll get that cut in probably tomorrow, I think now. Um, and then at that point, that, that will be great. And that leads me neatly onto this, which, we, we, which Cal mentioned uh, last week, which is a, a toy I bought myself um, a little, uh, few months ago, actually, about, about four or five months ago, uh, bought myself this um, Senga uh, planishing hammer. I'd always wanted one. Um, there are various uh, American uh, versions, which are very popular in the States, but they're very hard to get hold of in the UK. Uh, and these Senga ones were one of the few that were made in the UK and it's actually a really good tool and it's so useful for this sort of work because this wing it's very nice to be able to planish it on the car once this weld seam is done all the way around here you you have to planish a weld seam you, you, again I'm probably uh, teaching people to suck eggs here but whenever you weld uh, create a weld on a panel you are depositing metal at a temperature, say 1400 degrees C somewhere around there when you deposit a piece of steel at 1400 degrees C as it cools it gets smaller there's nothing you can do about that there's all sorts of black magic and wizardry and stuff that people talk about about doing various things to, to weld seams to magically make them not distort well they always distort there's no magic around that it always does you deposit metal at 1400 degrees it's going to get smaller as it gets colder 
What you do though, is you deposit that metal and you deposit a slight excess of metal, so you've got a raised section, then you hammer it against a dolly which stretches it and takes it back and changes the length back to the length it was. So when Stu goes all the way around, he'll tackle, he'll cut that in, he'll tack it at inch intervals and after each tack, he'll tap the tack up onto a dolly, stretch it back, which will get the length of the material back, then he'll do the next tack. You never, never do the next tack till you've tapped the previous one up because otherwise it'll pull the panel together and you'll lose your gap as you go around. So he'll tap all the tacks up as he goes around. Once they're all done and the panel's all aligned, he'll then go round it and he'll just TIG weld it all in one, all the way around, non-stop. None of this, the people talk about doing bits of weld and bits of weld and spreading the heat. It doesn't, it doesn't work, forget that. You just weld it all the way around. Once it's welded, you allow it to cool, then it'll be distorted. That will have shrunk and pulled that wing. And that's where you come in with this. And you'll then go around with this uh, splanishing hammer and basically hammer that weld seam all the way around. I'm not going to put it in the wing now, but you'll go around with that and that will, this little head oscillates in here, it's air powered, and uh, you pick the correct crown of dolly to get in there, which probably will be this one. I think this should get around that, looking at the shape. And you'll go around it with that and that will hammer the weld seam down, stretch it back, and as you go around, you just concentrate on that weld seam, stretch it all back, and amazingly, the shape will all go back to where you wanted it, as long as you do it right, <laughs> get your stretch right, then you'll stretch all that all the way around, the shape will go back to where it was, and suddenly it'll look great again. So yeah, we're really, really very, uh, I was very pleased with this little toy. I've been looking for one for ages, and it, uh, it came up on eBay at sensible money. I mean, re relatively cheap, really, considering that they, they fairly regularly uh, come up in pretty poor condition and go for a fair amount of money, and that, uh, so I was, I was very pleased to pick up on that. It was quite, quite exciting as I, and it, in a child when it comes to uh, tool toys. So uh, yeah, really, uh, really good. So uh, yeah, as, as of the end of tomorrow, I think we should have four wings that are all then at the stage where they need attacking with the planishing hammer. Uh, basically, that's the, the stage we'll be at tomorrow. So I guess moving on, we'll go along to the Camaro which is sort of in a bit of a state of flux plopped here at the moment. It's, it's been in here and it's about to go out of here again very, in very quick succession. The last time you saw this, it would have had it, all the front end attached to it. Um, it, it's been stripped down, it needs stripping down so, ready for, so that we can blast it, zinc metal spray it, and then start the body prep work. In order to do that, we need to take the front end off. And also, there was various bits of finished welding on the front end to do. Uh, that was all welded where it was accessible and it was welded equally to keep it all straight. Uh, however, it needs various bits of finished welding on, so, so it's been taken off of that. And then all of the underpinnings have got to go for blast, zinc metal spray and powder coat um, ready for later on for assembly. So, all, so it needed stripping down for that. And then there were a few bits that were inaccessible in terms of welding. There was a bit around the steering column there that needed welding. There were a couple of threads that needed tapping out. Uh, there was a couple of bits to trim and finish off underneath. There was a couple of bits of welding on the rear pan hard rod um, and damper mounting uh, bar. This, this car's got a, a kit in it um, for, to, to change the rear end to coilovers. And it's a, it's a bolt in, in inverted commas, kit from the States that actually involves welding a few bits into the shell. And there were various bits that we couldn't access at the time when we were last working on the car doing metal work. Um, so the car's been on the rotisserie today and yesterday for those bits of welding to be finished off. A couple of bits on the back end that needed going over and then provisions for plumbing, putting uh, holes in for threaded inserts, things like that. So that's all been done now. So tomorrow, this is going to come out of here and go into our blast room. I'm just trying to get the timeline right. Yes, yeah, so I think, no, probably on Monday, we'll be blasting and zinc metal spraying this. We've just blasted a car for, uh, as a sort of a, an aside task for um, a repeat customer that we have. Um, we've, we've blasted another one of his cars, which is actually going elsewhere for the body shell restoration. So we've done that today. And then this will be going into the blast room on Monday for blast and zinc metal spray, and uh, then come out for epoxy primer. So that's the, that's the stage we're at with that. I'll just, in a minute, we're gonna walk past all the bits that have unbolted off this, so I'll point at them as well. But uh, for, the, for the minute, we'll go this way. So here we have the Jensen, which I've been working on this week. Um, I've, been, I've got quite good at climbing in and out of it, uh, and I've got quite good at shining lasers around it and generally waving a tape measure at it. But we finally, as of the end of today, not fully welded, but the rear rail sections that hold the rear independent rear end are now in. Uh, the inner structure there is fabricated. 
um, to carry the, the through tubes, that, the crush tubes that carry, it's basically three inches wide, that carry these bolts that then pick up the um, V mounts that carry the independent rear sus suspension frame. It's all as per uh, Jaguar XJ series one, two, three, well, basically all Jaguar IRS is all, all much the same until, until XJ40. Uh, and then the outer ends, uh, we've, we've talked about it before, the outer end is X308, which is basically still compatible um, with a couple of modifications, which gives us outboard brakes. Anyway, that's all on the side. The rails are done. They're in. They're, they're now uh, all tack welded in. They've got to be fully welded and they've got to be plug welded and there's various other work to be done there. And then the inner structure on the inside, I haven't started yet, but I wanted to get the outer structure of those rails in so that the axle is aligned. Uh, so we, we make sure that it's it's aligned so that the, there is no steering angle on the rear axle so that it's perpendicular to the center line of the car um, and that the track uh, is centered on the car and that the wheelbase is correct um, as per the original CV8 wheelbase. All of those things are done. I'm happy with where it's at now. It's been quite a slog. There's been a lot of toing and froing. Um, it's been quite difficult in terms of measuring up, get, getting points to measure off. And also some of the, there's been a few bits of particularly robust structure in the way of where I've needed to notch a few bits out. Nothing, nothing, nothing very technical and it's not lost any strength from anything. It was just that there are a few joints of multiple panels exactly where I needed to put something. So it, it took a little bit of cutting out, but that's all done now. Uh, and uh, next week will be uh, a more pleasant bit of fabrication, which is starting to build inwards from the, in, the, the inner part of that rail structure in, then the rear bulkhead, the reinforcers for the rear bulkhead and the rear floor pans and the front part of the boot floor can all be fabricated. So I'm really looking forward to cracking on with that. It'll be, uh, it should, should get moving on that quite well now. Now the, the difficult bit of getting the axle all perfectly aligned is done and the front end's all aligned, so we're happy now to, I can press on with actually filling in the holes with some sheet metal and doing some pretty stuff, <laughs> which is always nice to get on with after you've been creating grinding dust and lying underneath a car, <laughs> repeatedly fitting a, uh, a, rear, a rear subframe <laughs> for quite a few days now. So uh, yeah, I'm very, uh, very happy to see this one progress and it's, uh, yeah, it's looking good. It's gonna be quite a car, this. So really very excited to see it moving forward. Yeah, moving on, we will wander this way past sort of various carnage because as I say, we've been blasting. So everything sort of, we have to move everything to do, to do blasting work. So big old diesel compressor lurking in the background. That's our, uh, that's our big diesel compressor we use for blasting. Come this way, the Chevette. Uh, Gaz has been working on the body kit fitment. He's made various bits of progress on that. Uh, it's moving forward. He's been doing brackets for the bumpers. We've just done some brackets. I've helped him do some brackets for the front bumper this morning to get that lined up. Uh, modifications to the wings are getting there now. He's modifying the headlamp apertures now to get them the right shape so we can actually uh, fit headlamps in it. Um, they're not going to be standard headlamps, so they, we, there's, there's various work we've got to do to, to, to that area. And he's then also doing bits of prep on the wings, just fettling, tidying up the um, mounting holes uh, and all the mounting flanges and filling those to fit the car. And all, 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 the, all the fun work with fiberglass to, to make sure everything fits. That's, uh, that, that's, that's progressing steadily. There'll be quite a lot more of that work to do, but that's, that's progressing steadily moving forwards. Um, once, the f the, once a bit more work has been done on the kit, uh, probably next week, I think, uh, this will be going back into, you guys will take the kit off so he can then carry on with some of the fiberglass prep work on that while the car goes back into the metal shop. So Scott can put it on the rotisserie um, because he's going to be moving on to seam brazing it all. Uh, he's going to seam braze, we TIG braze all the seams on the car, we clean them and then we, 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 we TIG braze them with a copper alloy rod, with a, a silicon copper, silicon bronze rod. Um, and then there's various bits of welding to finish off, a um, few, few, few more tasks to do, we've got to put some gussets on the roll cage, um, various tasks. Um, we've got to pull the engine and gearbox out. Um, they're still in at the moment. They've got to come out to enable us to do various bits of finishing in the engine bay, uh, finish off the, he's almost done it, but it's just a tiny bit to finish off on the dry sump tank um, uh, receiver fabrication in the inner wing. So, uh, so we'll be getting on with that next week as well. But this is getting 
close now to the end of metal work but there is still quite a bit of dry build work to do we've got to do provisions for things like the um the car the quarter cards inside the various bits of plumbing provision still to go into it so there's a there's a chunk of work still to do in the metal work workshop but not actually that much normal metal work per se so uh, we're, getting, we're getting through that now that's uh, progressing just a lot more fiberglass dust to generate yet um, as we as we walk through, we, I walk past it. But I'll, I'll, walk, I'll walk by it again this way now. The uh, these are, that's the front end of a Camaro, basically. Well, and the back end of a Camaro. The axle casings there. The axle torque arms there. The torque arm carrier bar. Oops, is there? Uh, the front clip, which is uh, the, the modified aftermarket front clip, uh, is there somewhere? There's a gearbox cross member. I don't know where that's lurking down there, possibly. Uh, and then that's our tube frame in a wing replacement structure that carries the radiation. That's what that, that needs a chunk of finished welding yet. Um, we've got to do all that on the bench. I, I, it's welded up structurally enough to come off the car, and then that will go on the bench for finish welding uh, all the other various detail bits. Uh, and then all of that lot can go off for um, blast, zinc, metal spray, and powder coat, uh, so that it's ready for reassembling the car. So that's that lot. And then as we walk this way, we'll just have a quick glance at a car that we built some time ago. Um, we finished this in 2016, I believe, although time flies, so I do lose track. Um, this is a, an Ascona 400, Opel Ascona 400 replica that we built for a, a customer in Ireland um who's uh, who's very uh, very enthusiastic about opals um as is the case there's, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, great opal enthusiasts in ireland and uh, and he's one of them um and yeah we finished the car in 2016 it runs a um uh, xc c20 xc Vauxhall red top engine uh, I think off the top of my head, I built the engine and I've actually forgotten the spec of it now. I think it's about 225 horsepower. Uh, it's got uh, big inlet valves, double valve springs, some QED cams, though I can't remember what spec they are, um, steel rods, forged pistons, that sort of spec. It's a sort of moderate, not too wild in the cylinder head department, but moderate spec, really torquey. On a set of director head um, QED 45 millimeter throttle bodies, makes a beautiful noise and it's very torquey, very road drivable. And it's on a road um, road uh, ratio gearbox. Uh, it's on a, it has a Vauxhall Omega gearbox in it. It's just nice to use on the road. He uses it for a lot of road runs. It's not a competition car. He uses it for road runs and takes it to shows and that sort of stuff. But that's over here to go on the rolling road just for, you know, it's done a few years now. It really wants just setting up again on the rolling road make sure it's uh, running nicely on there and there were a couple of other little little bits and bobs to do on it um, I can't actually remember the, 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 the there were various tasks to do but nothing very major the most the most major one is you can do with going on the rolling road and just being checked over made sure everything's tip top uh, and then that'll be heading back off to Ireland so thought we'd dwell on that for a moment as we we're passing as it's a, it's a lovely thing and we're all we're all big fans of opals still here so yeah it's uh, yeah it's good to see it again and then finally Jamie's reminding me we've uh, it, within the paint booth which is lurking behind all of this uh, detritus and uh, plant and machinery is the Mustang which has now had its uh, first coat of polyester its first coat of spray polyester so also I can't remember what order Gaz is going to be juggling jobs in next week but certainly he's going to be on to blocking the um the first blocking of polyester on the Mustang so that we can go around and uh, ascertain whether all the gaps are acceptable and whether everything's uh, whether everything's all good on that hopefully it is but we you, you get to the point of not being as I think Carl mentioned this last time you get to the point of not really being able to tell you've chased your tail around in circles for so long that really you need to get a coat of something uniform over the car with some build to it that you can block back and then ascertain where, where everything's about where you wanted it to be. So yeah, that'll be the next move on there, but we, we won't look at that because it's, it's hidden in the booth, but uh, there'll be, uh, yeah, that'll be, that'll be progressing again next week. So, okay, well, I think, hopefully I've covered everything. <laughs> There's quite a lot to try and remember. So uh, yeah, uh, until next time, we shall see you again soon. Cheers.